Hello, this is Jonathan with the Strategic Multifamily Investing Podcast. And my guest today with me is a, uh, a good friend and mentor, uh, Mr. Claude Labby. Mr. Labby, um, uh, Claude and I uh, met each other doing investment type stuff within the Washington, D.C. area, um, doing some of the real estate investment associations. And uh, he served as a, a, a mentor to me in some of those, uh, those other transactions. Uh, because of his own background as an investor, which we may get into in this podcast. Uh, but the reason why I'm asking him to come on today is because Claude has been, uh, as we've gone through a bunch of different things, he has connected with a lot of very um, high net worth individuals uh, within the Washington, D.C. area who are investing in the Washington, D.C. area, um, doing some very creative things. Uh, I know none of them, or at least I don't know their names, but Claude every now and then reaches out and, and we both are trying to correspond on something that's like mind blowing, uh, the types of uh, developments that we're, you know, we're seeing. So with that, I wanted to, to talk with him a little bit about how he um, comes across these individuals. How does he uh, work with them to be able to pull some of these things off? So with that, Claude, you know, I know you, you've got a, a very diverse background, so I'll let you, let you introduce yourself there. Oh, hi. Uh, Claude, Rob Realty for your busy life. Um, yeah, I've been, a, I've been a residential realtor for a long time, years, since 2001. And <laughs> when I first came into the market, my whole goal was to help small investors um, find properties because I, this was back in the time before that. I had really bitten onto that and from my own family. I understood the value of investing in real estate. So I sort of thought as a, as a licensed realtor, I can actually help people sort of step into that world. And that's, we met maybe not too long after that, I think. Oh, but, but it really was about helping people understand, um, get out of the mindset of real estate as a home and get into the mindset of real estate as an investment. And you treat, you treat the, pro, you, you treat the, it's a different entity completely. And that's what I was work, trying to work on. I've been doing that for a long time. And when the market changed here back in the, uh, in the 2008, 2009 meltdown, then I sort of flipped more to residential, mm -hmm. um, purely residential, because that seemed like an easier place to be at the time, <clears throat> which was counterintuitive, but there were actually lots of people looking to buy and sell at the time. And I've stayed there, but my mindset still, still works with dollars and cents, and I still yeah. see real estate as an investment. <clears throat> and so you know, how you get to here is that all the way through, there are people who just, who are just like, oh, you think that way too, huh? And that's how you start grabbing people. And I think you introduced it. You spoke to the secret in your introduction, maybe without even knowing it, right? Which is that okay. if you, as an individual, continue to offer help and assistance and connections to people, then people will always come back to you. And like people come back to you and they haven't spoken to you in three years, say, hey, how's it going? Hey, do you know someone who can do whatever, right? That gives yeah. me license. That yeah. gives me license that when I have someone we're like, hey, I wonder who's going to do something in, in Alabama. Oh, well, you know, like last time I, I was talking about Alabama, well, I swear this guy, you just, it's just like playing a, a card game, right? Like, so what do you, you get any diamonds you want to share here? And that's kind of how it plays. That's kind of how it works. So, I mean, so were you, were you going to the RIAs and passing out your cards? Were, I mean, what, were you, did you know that they were already high net worth in, initially and kind of, you know, did a couple of things? Because, you know, I, I have my own stories, but, you know, how, how did you meet some of these other individuals? No, I'm, I'm never that aggressive, right? I would go to the RIAs just to watch and listen. Okay. Just to see who's talking about what, what are they doing? And, um... It's kind of like just any social situation, if you repeatedly go to the same event, repeatedly go to the same club, if you repeatedly go to the same gym, you'll see who's all talk and who's like doing your thing in front of the mirror. And then you'll see the guy in the back who's just really quiet, doing his thing. And every, you know, every Thursday from four to six, he's there, or every Tuesday, Thursday, you just see who's doing the work and who's doing the talking. And so I was trying to find who's doing the work. And that's who I would go to them and say, so this is what I understand. Can you confirm what I'm going to Can you help me out? Like, so I'm not, I'm not competition to you. I'm trying to learn from you. 
And yeah. if I'm trying to learn from you and trying to learn from six others, you know, whatever you teach me, then someone else is going to come up with another opportunity that I can't do anything with, but I can go back to you. It's all about, um, not about returning favors, but it's about seeing who plays well in the sandbox and who, and who doesn't. And the people who play well in the sandbox, I want to, I want to play with them. I want to work with them. I want to learn what they're doing. So that's still true 20 years later. So we're talking about playing the long game and watching everybody. I, you mentioned the gym, you know, those who are in the mirror versus those who are quietly working all the time. I mean, that means that you're consistently going to the same place, uh, the same places um, and just observing. Um, I know sometimes that's, that's, that's not my personality. I ask questions. I'm out generally out in front, but by sitting back and observing, which I have done in certain cases, yes, you will, you will get to learn some people. Um, I remember, and, go ahead. And that's how you make the connections too. It's like, if you're observing someone, then go over and say, look, you know, like, do you have someone who can help me do this? And they're very effectively making their network available to you by saying, well, here's the resource, because they're helping their people, right? Like, so if he gives me his, his, um, if he gives me his commercial insurance agent, it's no skin off his back. He's helping one of the vendors who helps him. And then I make that connection. And it's just like this web. But I interrupted you. No, no, that, that's fine. I, I was just going to share an example that I had that was similar. I was helping someone else to potentially go after a commercial space. And it was, um, uh, it was a commercial property. And the owner of that particular property, you know, grilled, grilled the heck out of me about whether whether or not you know my client was ready to get into this and my client was at the time uh it just didn't work out however over time what happened is uh that particular same seller came back to me one time <clears throat> and said hey i've got this apartment building because you and i talked about it right he said i got this apartment building i'm looking to sell and i was just like oh okay cool and before it was all over you know he pulled me to the side you know because I found somebody else again who was looking for an apartment building, right? And I connected the two of them. So they had a conversation. Come to find out they knew a lot of the same people. They had been in the same circles. They just didn't know each other. And here I am as a fly on the wall, like, I mean, like, this is old money. I mean, 30, 40 year old money that was in the area. And the and it guy, is a, it's a small world. <laughs> if, you don't, if you don't play well, your name will be known. There you go. There you go. And I, I try to do my best. And, you know, at the end of it, he said, well, you know, hey, I've got, you know, like $10 million liquid I can leverage and we can make $40 million purchases if you can give me some things in five to $10 million chunks. And I was just like, my mind, I just, I couldn't, I couldn't even fathom what he was saying. But the fact that he would alert, alert me that that was a possibility, you know, um, and we tried to go after some things for him thereafter. But, you know, that was another situation where I was just, Hey, I know I was in so, in so many words outclassed because they had been doing this stuff for, for decades with their family. So that was a way of being able to get access to them. So why do you think he went to you after he grilled you? Why do you think he came back to you? That's a good question. Um, I think because he knew that I was above board and that I was, I was open and honest about certain things. And when, you know, I, 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 one of the, one of my values is transparency, but I have to balance that with confidentiality, right? So right. I can be, yes. I can be transparent, but I have to protect <clears throat> the client. And in that situation I did. Um, and there were some difficult questions that he asked that I could not, you know, answer in a, in a very straightforward way, because again, it would, it would have betrayed the confidentiality of my client, which we don't do. Um, and I think he sensed some of that and recognized, okay, well, at least he's, he's shooting level. Um, and we just, you know, certain things we could do, certain things we couldn't do. And we just kept it like that and moved forward. Uh, and I think he saw that. And I think that's what, what got him back. And then also too, I was able to produce, um, meaning he had this building and, you know, I said, he, he's, I said he had a, you know, there was a buyer and we brought the buyer to, to the, to the building and, they were able to vet each other and say, oh yeah, I know that this buyer is right. Oh yeah, I know this seller is right. We know the same people, they had the same attorneys, 
the same type of, and they That's just a good sign, right? <laughs> yeah, it was great, and it was just like, and I was just sitting there like. I'm here for, and it was just, just be here, you know, and that's exactly what it was. And so he recognized, okay, if you're able to find people like me, then you may be able to help me to be able to do some other things that I need to do. So I think right. that, I think that's the reason why he came back. And so we talk from time to time uh, on certain things. I mean, whatever you do, whether the deal goes forward or not, you want to make sure that you're comfortable looking at that person in the eye the next day. Um, yeah. And that they were with you. And that's that's key, right? Because it doesn't matter the deal. Because if the relationship is there, you know, right. a deal will come, right? You know? And actually, if the deal is there and the relationship is not there, it will not happen. Mm. Really, you've seen that, really? Because I, I I've heard people say, well, we'll just make you know strange bedfellows right now just to get this deal done because I want to get the deal done. Boy, it's got to be awful, awful sweet. Okay. What? What? Why, why, why do you, you know think what? that is? Why do you think that is, though? Because um, the buyer or the seller, their intuition is telling them there's something wrong. Okay. So you know what? There's another buyer down the road. There's another property down the road. Yeah, yours is nice, but. I think there's better down the road. That's why my intuition is telling me not to, not to do this. If something's not right. Okay. Um, and a lot of times people, people will just say, well, something's not right. Or it's just like, it's easy to slough off as the relationship doesn't feel right with this, the, this other side. But in my thinking many times, you know, six months down the road, like, Oh God, thank God we didn't do that. Cause oh. look at what I got instead. Right. I think a lot of people will, well, I think a lot of smart business people go out on intuition a lot more than we credit them for. So, I, look, I I was about to go like woo woo because I have I've been in, I've got an interview with someone else who um, started off doing some. They they bought their first you know four unit at twenty one, right? Um, and they're not in the multifamily space per se. They've got a couple of you know properties and townhomes and stuff, but they switched over to yoga. Right. And so, you know, he's saying, you know, deep breathing, meditation, things of that sort, I guess, to tap into your intuition. But do you have any of those type of exercises where you are enhancing your intuition or is it just that? Yeah. And I will be very open to my, I'll be very open to my clients about that. Like, because when you're working with a client, right, um, they drive, their needs, wants and goals drive. But then they, I'm giving them my best advice. And there'll be times when I'm just saying, you know, I just think, I think this is what we should do right now. And, the, and I have, sometimes I just say, I have a sense this is what we should do, or we should just, and sometimes I have to sit on my people. Like, no, 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 like, just um, don't be so aggressive or be more aggressive or whatever. Um, I, I, words i don't think this is the place for you let's move on right. you have right. to, i have to give i have to give permission i have to give people permission to come to a decision and sometimes logically they think this is what i should do um and if they're not if they if they are like this is it then i have to give them permission to say that's not it you can we, we just Let's consider other alternatives. If this is right, we'll be back in a month. But right now, like at times, I think my intuition sort of just gives them the right to just say, it's okay to step away. Um, before this call, I had, my timer went off 15 minutes before this call, so I could say, okay, I gotta stop doing what I'm doing. And I actually had the chance to make a phone call in between then, because I knew I had to speak to this guy. Right. And I hadn't spoken to him in over a week. And the only reason I was calling him was to say, I have nothing to tell you. <laughs> right? <laughs> Got it. But I could perceptively feel the ease on his side. Which is that he's, I'm, this is a new relationship for me with him. Right? And so I just never said, well, I'm calling to tell you nothing. Just so you know, I haven't forgotten you. And he was, oh, 
thank God, I was kind of freaking out. I'm like, you could, you could have called me, right? I said, but we're, we're good. No, I really, really want this. I'm like, I really, really want this. I'm like, okay, I will re energize for you, but we're good. I think, I think you do need to listen to it a bit. I think you. So you is there anything that you. I'm sorry. You can't sit there and let, say, okay, have, let the world do it. I'm just going to sit back and do nothing. Like, you've actually got to write the offers, do the marketing, do the phone calls, right? You've got to, you've got to help your, <clears throat> your intuition might give you a sense for what direction to go, but you've got to go beyond that. You've got to do the work. Got it. So then two things that you mentioned, um, and well, one thing that you mentioned about was follow-up, and I'd like for you to talk about, you know, any systems that you may have for that, for relationships in general. And then number two, uh, I think the initial question that I was asking about intuition is, is there any practice that you have to cultivate, say, your intuition? As I was mentioning before, the other gentleman used yoga as a way of being able, and deep breathing meditation, potentially as to cultivate his intuition. Is there anything that you do to cultivate that? And then whatever uh, systems. So this is, um, this is May 2020. Whatever answers I have this month will be different next month, and they were different the month before. Okay. I, I, um, so frankly, in April and May 2020, I will go out for a walk an hour and a half a day because these are COVID times. And I just have to get out of this. If I walk for two, three miles around the neighborhood, every day a different route, um, it, change, it clears the head. There are some days I'll go through and just listen to, I'll just listen to, um, I have a tape of sea waves. It's an hour of crashing sea waves. Other days I'll listen to podcasts. Other days I'll make phone calls. Sometimes it's a business phone call because I just want to get out of the house and just have an open-ended conversation with a client about whatever. Other days I'm calling friends because I just want to talk to friends. Just to, so the purpose of the walk is just to change the thinking and the feeling. But the, the way I get there might be very different based on whatever day it is. So that's, that's number one. Number two, you're asking if I have any ways to follow up and stay in touch. The systems, yeah. Yeah, so I've been a Buffini follower for a long, long time. Buffini, B-U-F-F-I-N-I. And that's all about building your business based on relationships, okay. which means that if I've got a half hour today, my half hour should not be spent cold calling or should not be spent on Facebook. My half hour should be spent reaching out to people that I know, like, and trust. And that's the big three, no like, and trust is, you hear that all the time. That's right? what Buffini, that's what Buffini wants me to do. He wants me to do calls, notes, and Popeyes. So send people a birthday cards, send people cards that I just think about you. Drop by the house and give them gifts. So I don't do that as faithfully as I should, because for me, dropping by and giving someone a little flower to this Mother's Day doesn't just doesn't feel right. Um, but then if it's a Valentine's Day, I love chocolate. So if I'm gonna drop by and, and give away 60 boxes of, you know, six little similar boxes of chocolate, that's fine because if I gave you chocolate, that feels very normal for me, right? Just, right? Um, or donuts is another one. So the whole thing is if I drop over to your house or to your office, say, hey, I was just thinking about you, I'm there. Now, some people, based on where their office is, see me more often than not, <laughs> right? Because if, if you're in Old Town I'm, and I'm in Old Town twice a week, well, I'm just going to say, hey, how's it going? Um, you would think, so with that as the setup, right? You would think that since I've been home now for, I don't know, since mid-March, I have had a lot of time to call people to say, hey, how's it going? And I haven't because I've actually been kind of busy. And, um, and part of it also is for a while, like for the first two, three weeks, like especially people that I'm working with, me to call and say, hey, how's it going? And they're thinking, does this fool really want to sell me a house? And, and I didn't. I just wanted to make sure how you're doing. So I've actually started now calling people to say like are you just safe and sane now i categorized my my friends and sphere if you will so those that were single living alone got the calls before others so i got the make sure you're not sane i hope you know let's just talk and joke then i started doing calls to people who are homeschooling see what their tricks are for like how do you get through this um but that's so that's 
the, the true philosophy of how I stay in touch with people, that's the philosophy. Stay in touch with the people that you know, like, and trust. Because they're the ones who are going to generate the business, but those are also the easiest calls to make. Like, um, and you've gotten some of those calls from me. I'm just yeah. going to say, hey, how's it going? Because yeah. I got nothing else to do for 10 minutes, and there's going to be a story or a joke or whatever. Um, now, many times, you and I, they'll be like, oh, well, what about, and actually, business happens. But it's yeah. just, I'm just calling to say hi. Um, another part of the business, though, and I've had to really, like, Think about this, right? Like business doesn't operate in 2020 the way it did in 2010. That's good. So That's in good. 2010, when Facebook came out, and I was very, very tech progressive because um, I came from a tech world. Right. I thought, yeah, Facebook. And I thought, no. I don't think any self-respecting business person would be on Facebook doing work. That's just, so boom, that's off. You know, and in the past year, I'm like, you know, I should probably rethink that that selection, because the question asked in 2010 may get a different answer than the same question asked in 2020. So in the past year or two, I've gotten back into, okay, maybe I should really think about social media and things. And now I'm like, well, if I'm going to be on there for work, hey, today Jonathan said he saw the baseball game and liked it. Huh, I should comment on that. So I'm doing more of that now. Um, I suspect people in my sphere party thinking, oh, really? Like he's on Facebook? What's he doing? Um, just for the longest time, I wasn't. But that's more of a truly lead generation, stay in touch process. Are you doing uh, Facebook check-ins from your personal Facebook page or from your uh, business page that you've created, Say It's from the business page. Got it's, it. Right now, it's all worked. Just Facebook is like, as a, in terms of a personal thing, I probably go on there once every six months. Yeah, and I just look, yeah. look at all my notifications. <laughs> One of those will be my, will be my birthdays. So I get pinged that day a lot, but it's not. But it is like I think that would probably be a fallback. I don't think anyone should follow my lead there. I actually think that there's a lot of work on social media, yeah, and mm -hmm. online, especially Facebook and Instagram. I think that's a really smart place for people to just be in. I just have honestly been late to it. So when you're saying, "What am I doing to stay in touch with people?" That's not the answer I'm giving you. I'm really going back to the old school. Got it. Um, and I think that a lot of, depending on your clientele and wherever you are, um, the phone calls work. I know when I started um, several years ago, you know, I had a, a list of about 10,000 people. <laughs> when I finally de-duped it and got rid of all the, the bad contacts or whatever, I was down to 7,000. So now I'm down to probably about 300, uh, both business and professional. But again, those are no, no me, like me, trust me people for the most part. Um, and I keep in contact with those people and I do reach out and at least once a year, buddy, you know, you get, you get the emails, right. That say, Hey, I'm just checking in, you know, I'm cleaning up my list. What's going on. You know, uh, I'm sorry. I cut you off there. You're about to say something. No, I mean, that, that's a pretty good size list, but you can't just email. You actually got to pick up and call. Yes. And I do. And uh, I get around to, to making sure that I, I do that. Um, so when you call, yeah. Purely for social slash personal slash business, because business comes from those calls nonetheless. They, when you they, call, they, yeah, and they don't pick up. You leave a voicemail. I do, I do, and the reason being is that um, you know something I, I just saw because I was doing some cold calling uh, yesterday, as a matter of fact, and someone um, answered the phone and they said, "Hey, I'm really not interested, but you know." you know, you're the only one who actually called, you know, or, you know, left a message or, you know, something like that, um, where everybody else is just, you know, they just hang up and keep moving on because of course they're using an auto dial and a predictive dial, which, which does work and there is success there. Um, for me, you know, in the no like trust category, I want to make sure that they know that I've called and if they want to call back, then, you know, then they can. Again, a lot of times, you know, even if there isn't direct business, there may be something else that, you know, somebody's interested in. For example, um, I had a call not too long ago from a former coworker um, who had a young lady who was trying to get it started in information technology, which is where we both come from. And, you know, he asked if I knew any females and I said, oh yeah, you need to talk to so-and-so. And so we made this whole, you know, connection and whatever. And so the, the young lady could get some mentoring, you know, in that, in that regard. So yes, I do leave messages 
yes, I do make calls. Um, I have not uh, been as aggressive with some of those calls recently, but um, on, on other uh, things, yes, I have been. Um, so can I step back for a second? That sure. young lady in IT, see, it's all about relationships. And whether you put people together who know each other or who don't, um, people will take action based on the recommendations that you made because of the faith they have in you. Right. So Jonathan said, I need to talk to you. Th that, that will happen. Exactly. Leaving voicemails. I leave voicemails too, which is my point. If I called you and you don't answer, okay, so it's not going to be two way, but I'm still calling you to tell you, hey, I thought about you. Right. Hey, I thought about you because of this reason. Right. Hey, last time we spoke, I thought you said your mom was in the hospital. Hope she's out. Right. You don't have to call me back. Just want you to know that I was thinking about you. Right. And my goal's right. been met. That's it. Yeah. And but if I don't leave a voicemail, then then I've not accomplished anything. Right. And you haven't made a connection or enhanced the connection. And I think a lot of this is uh, making the connection not solely for, for business, um, but truly, as you mentioned before, with your friends, you know, you were contacting them just to make sure that they were OK. And I'm pretty sure you did that for some of your other, you know, um, business related colleagues, uh, because truly within a, in, in this COVID thing, you know, and potentially we may have another resurgence come come. Uh, the fall, right. as some of the experts are saying, you know, people are going to be impacted. I, I've, I've had family, I had a half brother who actually was hospitalized um, during this first round. And uh, thank, mm. thankfully, he was able to, uh, to come home. Um, and he's, he's on the men, but uh, he's not 100%. But at least he was able to get off the ventilator, which generally, you know, is so, so you really have to be connected with people. And, I, and then I had another a set of family and friends in the Washington DC area, well, family. And in that one family, five people uh, were COVID positive, three of them passed, literally within two weeks of each other. Yeah. Um, yeah. Now the first two, three weeks of this, when people were still trying to figure out how, how we deal with this, a lot of my calls were to, um, especially the older people, I was like, look, I can go to the grocery store because I'm not, I'm not showing homes right now. So if I gotta go to the same thing for you, then I can go for you and a couple other people. So just let me like let me know what you need, and I'll and usually like I'm popping every two three days. Now I'm going once a week, but back then I was more aggressive with like I'll just go to the store. Yeah, um, you can actually call people and, and offer your help in different ways. Um, that makes them realize that yeah, you really care. They can lean yeah. on you. So then when they so then when they have a business question, they already trust you. And that's how, how you build trust is, is little things. You make a promise, you fulfill on a promise. You know, um, you say, I'm going to call. Another key example um, on the commercial side of things, as I'm, you know, working on that, I had a, a potential vendor who reached out to me and said, hey, Jonathan, I have something in Texas. And I said, okay. And he sent me some stuff and I was, I was like, this is not everything. And I was like, well, based on what you've given me, if I did the algebra and the calculus right, then this number should be this, right? And they were like, yeah, something like that. And then it started a conversation. And ultimately, the owner called me um, of this apartment building in Texas and said, hey, we're interested in potentially working with you. And it just became, it was, it was like this conversation like we're having right now. I mean, he owns thousands of units along with still do you still have stuff in Texas? When this is off, we'll talk about Texas because I have a car who's... Uh, no, no. And this might be good for everybody else. What's wrong with Texas? No, he wants Texas. Oh, you... Oh, yes, I've got stuff. I, yes, I we'll have stuff in Texas. See, there, see, we didn't even know. We were making a cut. You, have in Texas. you aren't on my Texas list. Please. Uh, so yeah, we started talking and, you know, right now, um, again, we're, you know, May, June, May of 2020, when this is being recorded, uh, the current underwriting guidelines for Fannie Freddie is, you know, a year and a half of escrow of year and a half of uh, principal and interest. You know, it was always a year of um, taxes or insurance, but it's both a year of taxes and a year of insurance. When you put all of that together, that's a heck of a lot of money. So this person just said, hey, you want to just take over our LLC? <laughs> what? <laughs> if you take over our LLC and just buy interest out, then, you know, 
you won't have to necessarily go through all the underwriting and escrow and then starting all over again. Now, of course, there's been, you know, positives and negatives on both of that, on both of those things. And we're taking a look at that. But again, it was something. And then after we got off the call, I was just like, okay, well, I haven't heard from him. So I sent him an email and said, hey, it was a great conversation a couple of days ago, but here's some things we got to need in order to move forward. And he's just like, okay, I think he was really just waiting to see what my follow-up skills were. Honestly, that's how I'm getting this. But he's, he's anxious, but he wants to see how we are following up and how we're doing business, which is all of what we're talking about now, you know, follow-up, 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 but it's the quality of the follow-up. It's not, you know, being someone you're not because i'm the fake it you make it thing i know it makes sense i understand i've had those conversations but it truly was hey this we're still working on our first deal this is what we're trying to do da, 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 da. he said well explain the process to me it's the same process to 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 underwrite and to buy so i guess he but again i think it was a test he wanted to know whether or not we knew exactly what we were doing uh moving along and i just want to say thank you very much to my coach uh josh sterling I'm gonna call him out on that one, and uh, to, to to Michael Blank and and uh, the uh, the group of people there, the coaches that that help out. So, and and guess guess what? Uh, who knows you? Because you've worked with Michael too, haven't you? I think you've worked with him. Like, like, long time ago. Yeah. Long time ago. Um, and I have nothing but nice things to say about Michael. I haven't. I probably haven't spoken in two years now, right? But yeah, but it's all about. How do you touch people and what you connect with? And you're right. If it is, um, so the guy in Texas, there are two angles here, right? This may not be the only thing he's working on. Exactly. So it isn't. It isn't. It isn't. It isn't. I'm sorry. I mean, because because he said, "Hey, and I've got this other multi, the other asset class that's sitting, you know, down the street from this that you may be interested in as well, and such as." And I'm like, "Yes, you're correct. It's not the only thing." And he's, he's not, he's, he's like not in a rush. He doesn't care about, you know, whatever. He's like, this is not out of distress. Hey, get you started on the first couple of, you know, dozen units and then you move up to this number and then you move up to this number. And he's just like, in so many words, I can help you grow. He didn't say that, but how he positioned it again, he, he, he left a lot on the table there. You're correct. I'm sorry. I'm just really excited because you're pulling out exactly some of the things that um, I think others would find okay. out. I mean, I follow up to that, but first, so the other thing I've realized is that a lot of people right now during business hours have many other roles to play. Hmm. Um, they're at home. They're potentially homeschooling. They're potentially got a, got a shift with other family members. So like their mind isn't focused on business eight hours a day which is making things a lot slower than it used to be. Um, when you were talking about how this guy may want to work with you for other things, don't discount the fact that he will potentially make money with you if he works with you on other things too, right? But it's not, it's not all about money. Right. If, if, I mean, I think, I think a lot of people get a nice up from helping build people beneath them, around them. That's good. Which doesn't necessarily all report to them, right? But if this guy can, can create like 12 little mini him, mini me's across the country that think like he does, is expanding his network. And also when he goes to sleep at night, he realizes he's doing good for the world, right? There's, there's a huge value now. I think people do like to have people look up to them and say, hey, how can you help me out? It's, it's a huge value. It pays forward to us. Wow. Yeah. This has been good. Uh, so one thing in terms of cultivating intuition, you said, I just want to wrap up some of these things here was your walking meditation, which is different, you know, per day. Um, I think some people like myself, you know, we want to try to get into a regimen, but it really regimens don't work, at least for me and certain things. As long as the regimen is, I'm going for a walk for that 30 hour, hour and a half of time, and I'm doing something whether that's making calls, talking to my friends, listening to a podcast, listening to, you know, ocean waves, waves. You know, ocean waves. Yeah. Doing something could be, I'm doing nothing. Cause I think you and I are both very type A. Yeah, very much so. To not be multitasking is a, is a killer. I'm walking to get exercise, minimal as it could be right now. And I'm walking to shut down the brain, the logical brain for an hour and a half. 
that's it. That has been probably one of the most difficult lessons that I am still learning is to shut down. Um, because we're type A, we're, we're driven uh, and circumstances have it such that we can't go as we <laughs> used to go. Uh, taking this time to, to, to really rest and to um, readjust is, has been challenging. But uh, thank you for that reminder. I just think um, that if you go out and you take your walk or you, you chill and you do yoga, an afternoon of inspired action, taken from a place where you're centered and you're calm, is going to get so much more than the longer afternoon because you didn't do your yoga or your walk, where you're just doing stuff. Like, when, just when you're doing this, is when you say things you shouldn't, you send emails that you regret, or you just do bad things. And those are really, really difficult to, you don't want to do that. Yeah. So, good. Sure. good. Well, look, listen, man, I, I really have enjoyed this conversation. Yeah. I think that it is useful, and I hope that people get uh, some enjoyment out of it. How can people get in contact with you? Uh, call or check 703-868-7774. Wow. Or Say that website. number again. Say that number again. 703-868-7774. And the uh, website is Your Busy Life, www.yourbusylife.com. Because if you um, have a full life and you're busy, then you don't want to do what you hire me to do for you. That's your busy life. That's good. Well, thank listen, you, my pleasure, man. We'll talk again real soon, all right? Bye.